stay recording? Yes. Yeah. All right, let's begin. If, Amen. They come late. They come late. All right. For, okay, we're looking at John 1.1. One, one. We'll be here for a while. Wind. The Gospel of John, verse 1 1. Now, we've, we left off with the deity of Jesus Christ being God. And we left off with God, Jesus Christ, the Creator. And we're going to deal with that again. A little further here. Because this is, is. essential. Yes, ma'am. If a man comes to you and says, I'm saved, and you question them, and you have the right to question to find out where that, and they believe in evolution and not the Creator, you, you, they're not saved. That's right. Thank you. If you have somebody, and another thing they have out there that is called theistic evolution, it's God created it. But he let it go and let creation do whatever it wanted to do. It's a blank, blank Christian <coughs> teaching. And what people do today is they will take junk and they'll add the word Christian to it and it's okay. And that's what theistic evolution is. Now our main goal here is to praise and lift up Jesus Christ. And 1 John, I mean 1 John, I keep saying 1 John, I don't know. John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the Word. And that's what we're going to focus on again today. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. And look at verse 3. Skipping over to verse 3. All things were made by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. Clearly. The three, verse, the three verses that start off the Gospel of John is Jesus Christ is God and God Creator is Jesus Christ. Now back to Genesis 1.1. And that statement that we read in verse 3 is remarkable by what we've already studied. Because when we read Genesis 1, we read the words, and God said, let there, and God said, let there. That's Jesus Christ, the Word. And John tells us in, the, in chapter 1, verse 3, all things were made by Him by the Word of God. Now, what are you going to do when you've got somebody who's got a perverted Word of God? Not the correct. Listen, it's absolutely the King James Bible. I mean, if you want to go... You know, old time would be the Geneva Bible, which came before the King James. But the King James Bible on the bookshelves today. We've already looked at one Bible, I think it was last week, that it changed Jesus into baptism. Well, that's the wrong salvation. Water. Water. Water baptism. No, the word was water. Well, I'm saying, the, the meaning of putting water was baptism. And that is the foundations of the churches that believe and baptism for your salvation. Now in the beginning, Genesis 1-1 is a typical belief. In the beginning. Everybody has an in the beginning. In the beginning, they have the Big Bang. In the beginning of Christianity, it's God. And you either have God or you have science and education that don't believe in God. So if we move forth here with anybody else comes out or the videos get out and somebody comes to this Gospel of John study and, well, I'm a scientist, I'm an evolutionist, I'm an educator, I don't believe in God. Well, you can't go any further in the Gospel of John because the Bible says in Genesis 1-1, in the beginning God. Big G. And that rules out science, because science That's God right. is a monkey. It's nothing that here we are today. Um, science is the Big Bang, but yet there was no nothing, ever. There wasn't even a divine creator. It just...
boom. Where did the boom come from? And they'll say, well, where did God come from? The Bible takes God as, it never questions the existence of God. It always proves it. God has always been here, and he's always been here. And you cannot describe his years, his days. He's eternal. And the Bible says, in the beginning, God. And that rules out education. If you don't believe in God, you can't go no further. And the two books that say, in the beginning, if you don't believe in God, you can't go any further. And as I said, John is a wonderful, the Gospel of John is a wonderful book when you're dealing with somebody who's lost. And they're not sure, they're agnostic, that they don't know, but they have not denied God. And they're searching. And they were open up a chapter every day or night, one chapter, and pray for God's guidance in the Word. Through the acknowledgement of God, God can do a work in them. As long as he keeps believing what God shows him. But you can't have someone say, well, here, read one chapter of John and pray. Well, I don't believe in God. You ain't going to go no further. Mm -hmm. And there are people out there, they meet these people of education and science that don't believe. And then they go on to the Romans Road. And at the end of that conversation, well, just say this prayer to go to heaven. Boom. They're going to heaven, but they don't believe in God. They don't believe in creation. But I've got a notch on my belt. I can go back to church and say, hey, look, i got someone to say and religion, in the beginning, God, big G. Religions have small g, d, o, s. They don't have God. They're not approved of God. When you deal with a Catholic, oh, I'm a Catholic. Well, you've got gods. No, I don't. Yeah, you got a man called the Pope. you got a woman named Mary. Right. Exactly. And you got every saint, 365 saints for every day of the year. And you pray the statues, which the Bible says is God's. Which is an abomination. Which is an abomination. Now, with, now with a Roman Catholic, you can deal with them, and you can get results. I'm a Roman Catholic. 31 years ago, this day, coming this afternoon, I was saved by Jesus Christ. Praise the Lord. I keep saying April 21st, but April 25th. Roman Catholic, I came out. How? Because a man came to me with a King James Bible and showed me. Now, if you can open up a Bible to a Roman Catholic or Catholic, and they're looking and reading with you, okay. But if they say, well, my Pope says I can't do that, or the authority of the church says over this, then you don't believe in God, you don't have God, and there's no results. Now, an atheist will deny God totally. There is no God. Agnostic, he's not sure. And you can deal with agnostics. And the fool thinks otherwise. He doesn't. The Bible says the fool has said in his heart there's no God. A fool will sit there, the Bible says, he'll scorn you. He'll ridicule you. He'll mock God. But Genesis 1.1 and John 1.1, if you deny God, you cannot go any further. You can't open the first, first page of the Bible and not believe in God and just keep on reading. You're going to be doing unbelief. So, when you're dealing with lost people out there, and they're lost, and they, and they deny God, and they're mocking you, or they're trying, well, I found this contradiction in the Bible, what you say? Well, can you get by Genesis 1-1? Can you get by John 1-1? And that's a test when you're dealing with somebody. They want, okay, let's, okay, you want to question the Bible, you want to know how Noah got all the animals. All right, let's deal with the Bible first. Genesis 1 1. In the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. How do you on that? Well, I believe. Then don't come to me about the Bible because you can't read the Bible. John 1 1. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word. How do you feel about that? Oh, yeah, okay, Je yeah, Jesus is. Then you can deal with them. Their attitude towards the Bible, now they're going to come to you with, with questions, with problems. The only main thing is the scorn. But if they can get by Genesis 1-1 and get by John 1-1, then you go further reading the Bible. And in your attempt of witnessing to about God, say, hey, let that question, that, pro that problem you got, maybe we'll deal with that later. Let's deal with you. And then you get with your soul. Mm -hmm. 
And Genesis 1.1 and John 1.1 will relate to the fact is, who are you dealing with? Whether it's saved or lost. A man could, oh, I'm saved. Okay, Genesis 1, I don't believe that. No, you're not saved. Jesus said, you got to live by every word of God. That's right. And he said that to Satan. Satan doesn't believe every word. No, he, th he thinks he's going to get victory somehow. So both books bring in the being of God of a surety. A surety. John chapter 1. And it's amazing how these two books will set off who you're dealing with. And even the Catholic Church denies to a, to a bearing about the, uh, the creation of God. Because they want the evolutionists. What be to the church that wants the world in them? That they'll change the doctrine so that you know, you'll come in and be welcome. That's why you got world of churches. So John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning... Now let's go to 1 John 1.1. 1, 1. This is the same John, back in the Bible, just before Revelation. Here's 1 John, 2 John, 3 John. I'm in June. I went too far. In 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, the same John... I keep going before and after. Right after. Oh, there he is. Okay. First John one one. I'm in second. Oh, I see Peter. And the wind's blowing. I don't like wind. Wind is not a friend to when you're preaching. So first John one one. That which was from the beginning. Was not in the beginning, but we're looking at the beginning. Which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word, capital W, of life. For the life was manifest, and we've seen it, and bear witness, and show unto you that eternal life, which was with the Father, and was manifest unto us. That which we have seen and heard declare we unto you, that ye also may have fellowship with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with the Son, Jesus Christ. So, we have a beginning here. And this beginning is not the creation, it's the beginning of the ministry of Jesus Christ. And when we set forth through the scriptures, which we're going to do in a moment, we see Jesus calling Peter and Andrew. We see Peter after that coming and calling James, James and John. The same John, the fisherman, that is writing. This is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. And with this, you cannot say we've seen God in, in, in the uh, creation. We've never seen it. Evolution has the same bearing that we have today. It's a religion. Because i never seen God. And evolution has never seen the Big Bang. I was never there in Genesis 1. But I believe it. They were never there with the Big Bang, and yet they believe it. So when the public school system says, we're not going to teach religion, we're going to remove religion out of our school. No, you've got a religion in the schools. It's called evolution. It's faith-based. And that's the biggest word today coming up. Faith-based organization. Faith-based belief. Faith-based. So is your evolution. Because we were not there. But what we're picking up now is not the creation. We're picking up the eternal, the earthly ministry of Jesus Christ. That's the in beginning. When Jesus was about, the Bible says, about 30 years old. We see the beginning of Jesus' ministry. We see John, 1 John 1.1, 1, 1, the disciples, 12 men. Jesus called of his inner personal 
circle that were with him wherever he went. And one of them was Satan, Judas, later on. Now, Judas was never a Satan from the beginning, later on. And even Judas himself will go to the priest and say, listen, I have shed the innocent blood, the blood of God. So when we see Jesus and the disciples, we see John 1 of the 12 saying, we have heard. Can you even imagine what the voice of Jesus sounded like? Sinless perfection. I mean, was it a squeaky voice? Was it a big monotone voice? Was it? We don't really know. We don't know. It may have been a kind of voice that would irritate you. Who know? I mean, it irritated him preaching the <laughs> preaching the word of God. We don't know. And. Again, a false belief that people say, well, I heard Jesus. No, that's not today. It's by faith. He says, we heard. We have seen with our eyes. So again, going back to someone who says, well, I don't think there was a Jesus. Well, you're going against 12 men. You're going against right. the Roman government. Let's look at Pilate and Herod who stood before Jesus. Never mind Jesus standing before him. Let's look at all the people, the people that opened the eyes when they were blind. Can you imagine that moment? And that's likened to us. I'm blind. I can't see Jesus today. But that moment I died, and I'm present with the Lord. Or that moment the rapture happens, at that moment we will see Jesus as though we are blind today. And yet, oh. Hello! Who's this? This is Leonard. Leonard! Oh, okay. How are you doing, Leonard? Good morning, how are you? Good. Hi, how are you doing, Louise? Louise, nice to meet you. And my daughter, Rachel, my wife, Hi, Rachel. Tracy. Nice to meet you. It's good to see you, Leonard. Tracy. 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 We've been praying for you and Monica all week. Grab, all the time. Grab a seat. Come on over here, Cindy. Uh, well, I was close. Yeah, you were close. The Lord knew. The Lord knows. Yes, amen. Yeah. You work at the flea market? No, he's a visitor. I was wondering if you I work out there. Where's that, man? Videos at the flea market. Oh. No, I just happened to stop there. Yeah. Oh, okay. What we're doing, we're in 1 John 1 1. Okay. And we're looking at, right now, we're looking at Jesus in the beginning of his ministry. We've already seen Jesus as God, we've already seen Jesus as the Creator. And sort of the end of the Bible first. Uh, yep. I have also have a uh, King James with me. Good. That's what they, you need. Okay. This if is, you didn't this, have one, we have one. Yeah, this is New American Standard. It's a good interpretation, I guess. <laughs> so we'll just wait to get that. Um, yeah. Good. It, it's that moment. I think. It, we're going to need a new body because if, if we were just entered heaven like we are today, we're going to explode. <laughs> because we're sinners. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's Our why eyes... the Lord gives us a new body because we can't be, in other words, won't be perfect until we go to heaven. This, this flesh is full of sin, so we can't be there with this flesh. It's got to give us something new. Right. And Moses, the Bible says Moses saw God nice and his face was enlightened. Yeah, the glue was shown. You can't even fathom. And it's you know, Jesus, Jesus it's preached the Israelites when they saw his face glowing that he had to cover it with that veil. Uh, it, it, it's amazing because God is just so wonderful and we're just so vile that we can't even... Jesus preached more about hell because he told Nicodemus, you can't even fathom heaven. heaven. It's beyond our scope. How can you imagine living forever without ever looking forward to death? How can you, I mean, when you get to heaven... I don't understand this. There's no pain or sorrow, but how are you going to remember the pain and sorrow that he took care of us? So what we're looking at 1 John 1, 1. Again, we welcome you out. We're going to meet here every Wednesday. I tried to get here early. I went and did my laundry this morning, and it took longer than I thought it was going to. Yeah. That's always fun. Yeah. 
So, First John one one. And what we saw that was from the beginning, which was which we've heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled the word of life. That word of life goes back to John one one, which we're studying. That capital W. Yeah. For the life was manifested, and we've seen it, and bear witness. Go to Jehovah Witness say, hey, are you a Jehovah Witness or are you a bear witness? What's that? Bear witness. You go up to him and say, listen, are you a bear witness or a Jehovah Witness? <laughs> because it says a bear witness. Well, what's that? That's what, the, that's what the disciples were. They were bear witnesses. And showed unto you that eternal life, which we know is Jesus Christ, which was manifested with the Father and was manifested unto us, that which we have seen and heard and declared we unto you that ye also may have fellowship with, with us. And truly our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, Jesus Christ. Thank you. So what we're looking at here is, He says in verse 1, we have heard. And we were talking about what, what could imagine be the voice of Jesus Christ in His human. We don't know. We have no idea. I always wonder what God's voice sounded like the Old Testament saints when he spoke to them. You know, it's Samuel was a little boy. He, he's, in, he's in the tabernacle sleeping. He says, Samuel. He goes, runs to Eliah. I mean, uh, uh, Eli. Eli. Are you trying to tell me that God's voice sounds like Eli? No. I mean, we think a big, holy, mastering voice, but Samuel ran to Eli three times. And here, John, the apostle, says, from the beginning of the ministry, we heard Jesus. And he's, he writes down in the Gospel of John what Jesus said. He says, we have seen with our eyes. Now, there are people out there who deny Jesus Christ. You've got 12 men here who has witnessed Jesus in the flesh. Herod, Pilate, Mary, his adopted father, Joseph, all the kinfolks, all the people of Israel, and as I said, people who were blind, the moment that he re relieved their sight, they looked upon him. And that's what's going to happen when we die, when we're saved. We're blind right now. We believe by faith those things which we have not seen. And you realize that Hebrews 11 says, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. I believe Jesus Christ by faith today. Now, whether I die or I'm raptured, either or, rapture's going to definitely happen, but I may die before that. That moment my eyes see Jesus, there's no more faith, because there he is. When you see Jesus, your faith, there is no faith in New Jerusalem no more. It's all happened. It's all gone. It's been. It's certified. It's happened. All the prophecies have been fulfilled. We're coming to the day that we're going to see Jesus as John saw Jesus. But in his holy form. And yet John, Peter, and James saw Jesus on that mountain. And he said he just blew with whiteness. You can't, you, can't, you can't be old. So when people say, oh, there's no Jesus. Or kind of 400 plus people saw the resurrected Jesus. What are you going to do with that? <laughs> now some people say, well, he was just a good teacher. I know plenty of teachers. There's, there's a, I don't know. Thousands of teachers in Volusia County, they can't make blind people see, they can't make the deaf hear, they can't raise the dead. So he's beyond it. Yeah, he's a teacher. He's 100% man, 100% God. He says, which we looked upon, and our hands have handled, they touched him. Now I can sing, he touched me, that, that him. Not like John. The Bible says that John rested upon the breast of Jesus. John's ear was right next to the heart, never mind the heartbeat of America, the heartbeat of God. This is the same John that leaned on Jesus' breast and says, we touched him. And then when Jesus' resurrected body, Thomas, in the upper room, Jesus says, come over here and touch these wounds. He says, thrust in thy hands. It's not a scar, it's a hole still. And the Bible says they held him by the feet. That's something we're going to do one day when we get to go. I get, see, my, 
and this is my impression, and you don't have to set this, but if you're to die before the rapture, I believe you're going to be on your knees. And you're going to open your eyes. You're going to see a pair of feet, and they've got a hole in it. Now, this is what I believe, and, and you know, I have no scripture about that. But I don't think, some people say, I'm going to go high fly Jesus, you know, my man Jesus. No, 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 there no. Are, there are a lot of scripture in the Bible that does say that they fell on yeah. their face. So, yeah, I mean, right, literally. Literally. So, so, yeah. and the thing is, I think you're going to see those feet, and be, your eyes are going to be like, what's going on? I mean, if you were in a hospital bed, here are feet. The Bible says, boom, there's no even time limit for that. And then you're going to look up, and you're going to see hands stretched out, and they've got holes. And you're going to get up at his command. And I guarantee you, I, I don't know, you're going to wrap your arms around and you're going to take a couple of angels and wrap them off. Because there he is. You're going to be dumbfounded. You're going to be amazed. You're going to be wondering. Finally, there he is. And in that moment, you begin eternity worshiping and praising him. And it's closed with this verse. says, the word, capital W, of life. So what are you going to do when you get people erasing and changing and mocking the word of God? Now, the great white throne judgment, I don't, you know, it says God. But the Bible speaks about Jesus Christ is going to be in that great white throne. The Word is going to speak to those who will be condemned to the lake of fire for all eternity. Now, imagine you walking up there to God and say, Mary worship. You know? Mary worship? Okay. Really? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. Okay, right. what about you, sir? I was good. I was... He looks at the holes in his feet. Really? You think you're better than me? Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity, I never knew you. And then Jehovah Witnesses steps up. Really? You witness for the Father using a perverted Bible? Teaching the the, 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 the the errors of the way, the part for me, workers of iniquity, I never everybody's gonna have that stance with not believed on the word. I believed on the word. I'm saved. I'm gonna look to Jesus as a wonderful, great now. Right now. Let the Lord come right now. Let the Lord pick up and finish his Bible study. That's how I look at it. You imagine that moment if it were happening right now, we're in the clouds, and the next next thing we see is Jesus. But for the lost man that rejects that capital W O R D of life, it's going to be a terror to him. And John says, "We heard, we seen, we touched." Matthew four twenty one. I can't help not to praise God. Amen. Oh, why not? Been great to us. Right? Matthew four twenty one. Now we looked at the beginning, and here, there's another, well, after the baptism of, of Jesus, which we'll get to, but right now we're looking at John's testimony through 1 John 1.1 1, 1 and 1 John, or I keep saying 1 John, 1 John 1.1 1, 1 and John 1.1. 1, 1. So let's pick up where we were at 1 John 1.1 1, 1 in Matthew 4.21. And going on thence, he saw other two brethren, James the son of Zebedee, and John, there we are, his brother, and a ship with Zebedee their father, mending their nets, and he called them. And immediately they left the ship and their father and followed them. So here is the beginning, not only of Jesus' ministry, but here is the beginning of James and John, the writer of the Gospel of John. Bye, Dad. We'll go follow him. No. What's that? He's calling Peter, Peter and Andrew. Yeah, but we're looking at John right oh, now. Okay. John the writer we're looking at. This is the point where John and his brother get out of the ship and they go off three and a half years. 
Luke 5, 10. The Gospel of Luke, chapter 5, verse 10. Win. Chapter 5, verse 10. Again, this is not John the Baptist we're talking about. This is John the Apostle. We're going to run into John the Baptist in two verses, a couple of weeks. And again, it's written, 5.10, And it was so also James and John, the sons of Zebedee, which were partners with Simon. So Peter, James, John, and, and Simon, and oh, well, Simon, Peter, and Andrew, they were all together as a, as a partnership. We looked at that a couple weeks ago. Fear not, from henceforth thou shalt catch men. And they went, and when they had brought their ships to land, they forsook all and followed him. So this is the beginning, this is the point where they've heard Jesus. This is the point where they've seen Jesus. And they'll be touching him. And they'll be living with him. For three and a half years, they've heard, they've seen, they touched we're going to be with eternity. And what did they touch? They touched the word of life. That very word in Genesis 1 said, and God said, let there be. And God said, that's Jesus. Amen. The creator of all things. There he is amongst these four men. Jesus is the word. 1 John 5, 7, I think it is. 1 John 5, 7. So with this word. So, I'm going to make a statement after this. Hopefully I don't forget it. I do do that. So, I'm going to do it. 1 John 5, 7. I'm going to make it now so I don't forget it. you got a Bible. I'm going to tell you the King James Bible is the authorized version that God approves. Anything else is garbage. So you take a King James Bible, which they all do. All modern Bibles take a King James Bible and correct that. Now it says here, 1 John 5, 7, For there are three that bear record in heaven. You look at that Bible, but this verse has been perverted in the Bible. The Father, that's God, first member of the Trinity. The Word, we now know that's Jesus Christ, John 1, 1. And the Holy Ghost, these three are one. The Word of Life, 1 John 1, 1. The Word, uh, John 1, 1. The Word, Genesis chapter 1. That is Jesus Christ. Now, what are you going to do when you take His Word and you take an eraser and you erase it? And the only thing I can picture, can you picture a woman who has makeup on and it's rain and it's just all blurry on her face, it's running? Can you picture Jesus Christ as that and what they've done with the Bibles? by marking it, by changing it, by erasing it. We, like I said, a couple weeks ago, we seen that that word was changed to water. It's not baptism that saves you, it's the word. That's one of the Bibles somebody brought. It actually well, said water. What is that now? That's the, in verse I mean, seven, seven yeah. There, yeah. there was a Bible that said water instead of the word. Oh yeah? Yeah, that's baptism. Baptism can't save you. No. no but right. that's what they say in that Bible. Who, who, who put, is that the uh, Jehovah Witness Bible again? Yeah, it was an ESV, English Standard. So I forget which one it was, but I, that, that threw me off. I never seen that one. Ones. So what we do is we see the word as revelation. Now, does that bring anything to you for revelation? And who wrote revelation? John. So let's go to Luke chapter 1, verse 2. Luke chapter 1, verse 2. The Bible says that God holds the word more. The word is the is God. The word is. Oh, 
Luke chapter one verse two. It says, even as they delivered them unto us, this is Luke writing, he's a medical doctor. Even as they delivered unto, uh, them unto us, which from the beginning were eyewitnesses, 1 John 1.1, 1, 1. forget about eyewitness news, how about eyewitness the, the apostles and the disciples? That's better than the news. Ministers of the word. Now that's not capital because that's the word that Jesus spoke. Luke, the medical doctor, said what those apostles spoke, what those disciples spoke, they were ministers of the one that is the word that they saw. They wrote what they saw. They wrote what they... It's like a traffic accident in an intersection. And the cop goes there and he starts, hey, did you see it? Yeah, I saw it. And he starts taking notes. Luke, that's what he's doing. He's, he's with the disciples. He's with the Holy Spirit. He's just taking notes, what they see, what they heard. So what you're reading, yeah, man wrote the Bible. But by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Man is the pen, but the ink is the Holy Spirit. You come to, oh, man just wrote the Bible. I agree with you 100%. But Shakespeare never had any, any prophecy. The Koran has told you nothing of tomorrow. You just take that and color it inside the lines. That's all you can do with the Koran. There's no prophecy in religious books. You've got uh, the Mormons book. There's no such people ever in the continent of, of America. So, the Word of God, the Word of Jesus, they're ministers. Right, there are ones who were the servants. They're the ones that served. They were with Jesus in His Word. Twelve of them. Now listen, all the time those disciples fought, and they fought much. You think if a disciple is going to write something down in the Scriptures, you think if, if Peter didn't agree with it, you think Peter will allow it? Peter never once said, well, you know what Matthew said is wrong. Well, don't believe what John said. As a matter of fact, Peter will say about, about the Apostle Paul, yeah, he wrote scriptures. He wrote epistles. They're hard, They're hard to understand, but he wrote them. <laughs> so, you've got 12 men with God, Jesus, in their testimony. And let's go here. The last, uh, let's see, this is John. Let me find this chapter. He's talking to Phil. Uh, he's talking to Thomas in the upper room. John chapter... 20. Chapter 20, verse 29. John 20, 29 is us. Now this is... Now, while you're turning there, here's a man that's looking at Jesus eye to eye, and he says... Thomas, put your finger in my hole. Okay? Now, Thomas is seeing Jesus right then and there. He is an eyewitness. Beyond a shadow of doubt, and the 11 apostles are there. Or disciples. But we read in verse 20, uh, 29. And Jesus said unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, you're seeing Thou hast believed. No more faith. Oh, I see it. Boom. Watch this. Here you are. Because, uh, because blessed are they that have not seen. Have you not seen Jesus? Have you ever seen Jesus? Do you believe? Yes. Yet have believed. We have a better stance than Thomas. Because we're believing by faith. Hebrews 11.1 1. Thomas saw him. At that moment I said when we see Jesus. That's it. Faith is gone. Blessed. Even happier. But blessed I know that Jesus is alive. I know Jesus is well. I know Jesus is my Savior. That makes me happy all the day. Even in times of troubles and problems. Man. 
I wish lost people like Preach G would get this. I wish lost people would get this. I wish people would come out of their religions and get this. I wish everybody. But the Bible says many will go the broad way that leads to destruction. That's right. This is not a many, uh, I don't want to say religion, but let me say it for the moment. This is not a many religion. This is Christianity. Relationship. Relationship. Amen. And there are people who call themselves Christians, and they don't have the joy. They don't have the assurance. One of the few questions that I'm dealing with somebody, and there's many of them I'll get to, is if you were to die right now, do you know you're going to go to heaven? I know. And they'll say, well, you no, know, you can't know. John wrote, these things have I written unto you that you may know you have eternal life. I always express right. that. No, right. I know. Now, every once in a while, Satan will throw a monkey wrench in there, and okay, just, you get in the flesh, you get in with Satan, and you just plead the blood and say, Lord, I need help. And then you get that assurance back. There's no insurance anywhere else. And the stated fact is that God does exist. In the beginning, God. Well, I, no, then you got a problem. Mm-hmm. Well, my no, you got a problem, First John. You got a problem with John one one. You got a problem with Genesis one one. Your problem is with God. Your problem is with Jesus. And Paul tells us there's another Jesus out there. So Ephesians three nine. Paul's epistles, Ephesians. Grandpa eats popcorn. <laughs> I can never forget. Once I learned, I had never forgot that. Ephesians 3 9. And when you got, I, I, I don't know the order, but when you got Timothy, Titus, well, Titus, you got Thessalonians, Timothy, and Titus. The best way to, I remember that is the three crosses. Take the T's and make them small T's, and you got three crosses. Uh, that's, uh, you know, it's weird. But Ephesians 3 9. Going back to the creatorship, and it may, and to make all men see. I witness. Make all men see. Wait a minute. What, what can I see? Make all men see. That's even lost men. Eyewitness. What is the fellowship of the mystery? Oh, here's a mystery. Which from the beginning of the world has been hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. Uh oh. When you say the Big Bang, you deny Jesus Christ. And don't tell me it's theistic evolution because it's Jesus Christ. And we saw that in Genesis 1. Jesus is the creator. In the beginning, God created. You've got a problem if you're a Jehovah Witness. Because those two verses say right there in the beginning, God and Jesus. Created. Hid in God who created all things by Jesus Christ. And run that right back to Genesis 1 1. They are one. Now, Isaiah 9 6. Now, this is a good verse. You want to mark to deal with religions and science and education. Have you ever had one verse, one one opportunity? One opportunity to deal with anybody's loss. Isaiah 9, 6. And write it in the cover of your Bible. I only got one time for one, one Bible verse. Okay, I only need one. Isaiah 9, 6. There you go. And this is wonderful for a Jew, too. You. So we've got, for unto us a child is born, for unto us a son is given. And you take that right back to what we're going to study in John 1. He came on his own, his own received him not. That's the cross reference if you're dealing with a Jew. But there's a son given. And then you can go say, 
Can you tell me the story of, about Christmas? Oh, Jesus was born. Okay. That's all you need to know. You need to let him talk a little further. But Jesus was yeah. born. You mean the baby Jesus, the son of God. Yeah. All right, so unto us a child is born, Jesus. Unto us a son is given. The born is the human part of, God, of Jesus. Given is the God part of Jesus Christ. How's that? He's both born and he's given. Read Mary's testimony in Luke chapter 2, I think it is, sometime. And the government shall be upon his shoulder. Oh, man, they hate it. Yeah, yeah, this is a good one. And his name shall be called capital W for wonderful. A lot of colored people, that, that's wonderful Jesus. If you deal with the colored person, there, there's the wonderful Jesus right there. Counselor. <laughs> oh, your daughter wouldn't like that next one, would she? <laughs> the mighty God. This, this would really upset him, wouldn't it? Yep. The mighty God. What God, okay, this, what God was born and both given to the human race? Uh, you cannot not deny that verse unless you just want to outlier, outright lie. The everlasting, not just Father as in a priest, but capital L. There's two whammies that Jesus is God. You can knock the Pope off the throne with that one. Because you go to the Prince of Peace. That's the Prince of Peace. That is so famous used by the Catholics. There are churches, Prince of Peace. The Mighty God, the Everlasting Father. There's no room in here for Pope or Mary. I, I, I don't mean to interrupt No, no, I, no. I, I a, ask questions. Yeah. I had uh, picked up a book by a former Catholic. I don't know what I ever did with it. I move around so much. But they've actually uh, declared there is a, in the church a Catholic Mary a co-redemptrix. Yeah. Yep. She's not. No, of course not. That's, if, that's a blasphemy, actually. If, if, if you get right. Jesus mad at you, you can go to his mother. Yeah. I've heard that from him, too, yeah. 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 So, you've got to see that Jesus is God. You've got to see Jesus is creator. Now, th this is the beginning of study of, of John 1.1, 1, 1, but this is also the beginning when you're dealing with a lost man. Because there are people out there who say this prayer, here's a tuxie roll, here is fun times, here is, well, okay, we got to give up time, let's just say this prayer, and you can go to heaven. And the guy denies everything we've read today. And we're coming to an age that it's getting worse and worse, it's not evolution, it's not getting better and better. We're getting to a time that God, the people are waiting more for the Antichrist than they are for God, for Jesus. Even Christians, oh, can't receive the mark, can't get this tattoo, you can't. The 666 is not nothing for the church age. That's after the rapture. Why are you so worried? If they came up to me and said, well, we're going to put this mark in your right hand, what for? Well, you know, if you ever become dementia and that, and we can't find you. Because I've heard terrible stories about people who lose their minds. All right? If it's through the grocery store, you know, okay, I'll use it. It's quick and I'm trying to find my card in my wallet. I don't lose it. I'm not going to lose my, you know, in my hand. It don't bother me. I'm not looking for the Antichrist. I'm looking for Jesus. Amen. And when we're dealing with lost people, if they don't believe what we read today, there's no point in going for it. I'd rather say, here, here's a gospel track. Let me write your name down. I'm going to pray for you, but I'm ending it right now because we're going nowhere. Mm -hmm. There's somebody else I could talk to. You got an atheist. You got a, you got a, and the Bible speaks well, dumb. They just don't want to know. They're blind. They don't want to hear. Don't spend all day. Don't waste your time. Here's a gospel track. Let me write your name down. The Bible says, Paul says, I planted and Paul's water. You just maybe just putting the seed out. Maybe time for water later. But God gives the increase. And then many, many people are going to go to hell no matter what you do. That's right. And it's sorry that many people yeah. are going to go to hell this day and age, the Laodicean church age, because I said a prayer. Now that's my wife. How many times have we dealt with people? Well, oh, I said a prayer. And you look at their lives like, really? Lives don't tell me. Don't you judge me. Mm -hmm. 
Well, somebody just damns your soul believing that you're saved. And that's tragic. That is tragic. We see Jesus Christ. John 1.1. 1, 1. I said, this is a wonderful gospel for somebody who's searching and somebody who's, who's brand new saved. And they're brand new saved, they're young. Get them in 1 John. I keep saying the first John. Get them in the Gospel of John. And then the next book would be Thessalonians. Those are the two great books for starting off. Don't do what I did when he first got saved. I got the book of Revelation. That's the first book of Revelation. And in my young Christian walk, you know, I was praying to Satan to get saved. That's how messed up I got. I say, Satan, you see at the end of this book, you're losing. You need to get right and get saved. I'd say that to Satan. <laughs> really? <laughs> Those were the days. That was 31 years ago. <laughs> See, I've always read the end of the book first. If it was good, then I go back and get the book and read it. I'm weird. John 1.1, 1, 1, in the beginning, how we saw that. So, when you're dealing with lost people, there in the beginning has to be the Word. Now, I came out of church one time with movies. We got this Christian movie. Now I've learned the Bible, I, those Christian movies are wrong. Dead. Faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Uh, Romans chapter 10, I think 14. No. Romans 10 was a little late in, in Romans 10. So there were movies. There's this colored book. Black, yellow, green. It's not Word. It says in the beginning the Word, you got to have a Bible. you got to have sit down with the Bible and say, sir, okay, let's right, read this for me right here. Let me, see, let me, I'm going to read this here. you got to have their eyes in the Word. you got the Word. Open. And I'm going to go so far as to say, me, it better be a King James Bible. I don't trust other Bibles for witnessing. Now listen, I came, my first Bible was a good news Bible. It had pictures in it. I stole it. I stole it because it had pictures. I was given a Gideon's Bible. I would read, read that at my lunchtime when I was working at the submarine place. I didn't know it was an RSV. And I started comparing the Bibles. Oh boy, I got out of this one. My grandma lived in, had the living Bible. I said, Grandma, I said, I said do you cuss? She was saved, wonderful saved one. She said, no, I never cuss. I said, but that's the living Bible, right? She goes, yeah. I opened up there where uh, King Saul is bawling his son out. And it says, that's OB. Son of a, I'm not going to say it. And that Bible went in the garbage can and she got herself a King James. <laughs> it has to be for a lost man, in the beginning was the word. When they tell their testimony, they say, well, how'd you get saved? A man named Joel Caswell came to my grandma's house with a Bible. He opened that Bible and showed me the Bible, showed me my condition, showed me I'm going to hell. As a result of the Bible, not him, because he turned on me, not the Bible, I got saved. He said, well, what gospel track? They've got scripture. And the best thing, and you've never witnessed, you've never done anything. Oh, I want to remember what scripture should I memorize? Pick up chick tracks, pick up gospel tracks. Those are the best ones for witnessing to people because all those scriptures are about witnessing to people and build from there. But that has the Word of God in it. You can use a scripture sign. Uh, oh boy, my mind is right. Barely, uh, I say to you, you must be born again. That's, that's scripture. Yeah. Scripture bumper stickers on your car. That's scripture. It's the word of God. It's a lot better than the fish. You don't know what that fish is. Maybe we'll get into that sometime, but that's satanic. That's satanic. But, um, it has to be the word. In the beginning was the word. 
That word in the beginning, Genesis 1, God said. If God never said anything, we wouldn't be here right now. There would be no trees, there would be no grass, there would be no animals, there would be no bugs. Can I ask you something? Sure. You just said the fish is satanic? Yes. Are you talking about just that the sign of the fish? That's that symbol. Uh, that Catholic I, I thought that's how they identified themselves in the early. No, um, now I've seen the one yeah. where they've got the feet on the fish. Yeah. That implies evolution. That's what that yeah. one implies. Right? Um, what the fish symbol is, Jesus told the disciples, said, follow me, you'll be fishers of men. Mm -hmm. Well, right there, you're going to go out and get a bunch of people who are not Christians. So the representation there is, they're lost people. They're fish. They're pardon, fish. Pardon. They're fish. The people that are lost yeah. are the fish. You're going to go catch them. Not a Christian them. isn't the fish. No. And then, that's the reptile class. When you look the over here, is from the reptile class. Revelation chapter, Revelation chapter four or five, five, four maybe. Revelation chapter four, the four beasts. All right, chapter four and verse seven. Revelation 4, 7. beast was like a lion. That's a wild animal. Out in the wild. The second beast is like a cow. That's a tame, domesticated animal. And the third beast had a face of man. There's man, human. And the fourth beast was like a flying eagle. There's your birds, chickens. You recognize something that's missing uh, in all the classes of living things? Fish is missing. Fish. All right, Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28. Ezekiel 28, verse 2. Ezekiel 28, 12. Son of man, take up a lamentation. This is, this is a whoa. Oh, man. Upon the king of Tyrus, and say unto him, Thus saith the Lord God, God speaketh, Thou sealest up the sun, full of wisdom, and perfect in beauty. Thou hast been in, the, in Eden, the garden of God. Now, was the king of Tyrus in Eden? No. God is addressing the king of uh, of Tyrus but he's addressing Satan the rulers of the world because watch it's definitely this is not a man man every precious stone was I covered and it goes to Sardis down to verse oh, at the end of verse workmanship of thy tablets at the end of verse 13 and thy pipes was prepared in thee in the day that thou was created here is somebody created and he's a one-man band. He's in charge of music. That was Satan, right? It's Satan. Let's keep reading. Yeah, that's Satan. Thou art the anointed cherub that covereth. All right, so we saw the lion, the man, the eagle, and the ox. Here's the fifth one. And he's fallen. And I have set thee so... That was upon the holy mountain of God, thou hast walked up and down in the midst of the stones of fire. Fire walkers. Thou was perfect in the day in thy ways from the day that thou was created, till iniquity was found in thee. Those beasts that we saw are these anointed cherubims. There were five of them. One's gone. 
And the missing class that's missing is a reptile class. Amphibians, turtles, snakes. Was in Eden. All right. Let's go to Genesis 3 1. Genesis 3 1. You can ask questions anytime, interrupt. No problem. We're here for learning, not for time. If I'm going too fast, just tell me, slow down. Genesis 3 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any of the beasts of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God's... There's that in the Eden that we just read in Ezekiel 28. He's a serpent. Reptilian. Now let's go to Je uh, Revelation chapter 12. Revelation 12. And this will finish who he is. Revelation 12. Index. Revelation 12. I hope <laughs> Revelation 12. And let me find. Number three. Seven. Seven. All right, verse. It says that Nine. old serpent. Nine. All right, Revelation 12, 9. And the great dragon, that's reptilian, was cast out that old serpent, Genesis 3, called the devil and Satan. That fish is an ambassador of the reptilian amphibian class of animals, and that's Satan. And when Satan, I mean, when Jesus, oh, God, forgive me, when he told the disciples, come be fishers of men, let's go take him away from Satan. Let's bring him to me and your father. A Christian is never a fish. He's a saint. And there is no... I know they got involved with that. that fish, but that, that came out of the Catholic Church. Is that where that came from? Yep. Where they used the saint? I know they did a lot of strange stuff. Yeah. In their quest to uh, get powerful. <laughs> yep. So, and that's, of, that's where that comes from. That, that fish, that amphibian class is... We already, we already saw yeah. a, ma a man as one of the cherubim. I know they, uh, they had a lot of strange things, their indulgences. Yep. Oh, I, yeah. that, that's what made Martin Luther angry. That's why he nailed those theses to the door. But hey, I can commit this sin and pay for it. And like I said, hopefully uh, through all these studies, keep coming back. We're going to learn more and more and more. I also read, though, that uh, shortly before Martin Luther passed away, he was very anti-Semitic. Those are the things out there I don't know. I haven't really done it. You gotta realize the Catholic Church the Catholic Church threw a lot of things against him because he was against yeah, the church. Yeah, it may have been then who uh, yeah. But even still with Luther, he was a his his church, his Lutheranism, they're just a washed Catholic. Yeah. They're just a Catholic with another name. Yeah. He just didn't like some things in it and he changed Who was it at the turn of the last century? Not this one, the one they called the Azuzu, or, or, or the big uh, 